To determine the age of the drones at any time, color marking immediately after hatching has proved to be a very useful procedure. The drones can then forage freely until needed. Six days, the queen is sexually mature. On the day before insemination, the queen is caged so that she can be later narcotized with CO2 in the laboratory. This treatment takes about five minutes and it helps to accelerate the onset of egg laying. Until she is inseminated, the queen is returned to her nuclear colony. Hygiene is essential in the insemination laboratory. All glass and metallic instruments are autoclaved daily. In preparation for semen collection, a semen diluent, for example saline solution or as here, tris buffer, is drawn up. The liquid is sterilized by microfiltration. The pore diameter of the membrane is 0.2 microns. Now the insemination syringe is filled with the buffer solution. Bubbles of air are carefully removed. The syringe is assembled and the column of liquid advanced to the front save for a small bubble of air at the tip of the glass tube. Then the syringe is mounted on the insemination apparatus. Drones which have been reared in cages by workers are used as semen donors. Rolling and pressure on the thorax and abdomen affect the first phase of eversion of the copulative organ. Further pressure results in complete eversion and ejaculation. Mature sperm is cream colored and marbled in appearance. As here, it often covers the white mucus plug of the endophallus. Using the glass tip of the insemination syringe, merely touch the surface of the semen covering. In aspirating the sperm, none of the mucus should be allowed to penetrate into the syringe, thus preventing the cannule from becoming obstructed by a mucus plug. Similar to the natural mating process, the semen of several drones is aspirated in portions. A minimum of eight microliters are required for insemination. This corresponds to the quantity of semen donated by eight to ten mature drones. If necessary, the tip of the cannule is cleaned off with a sterile swab. A drop of diluent closes the capillary to prevent the semen from desiccation. Now the syringe is ready for insemination. The term sperm homogenization implies that the semen of, say, several hundred drones is blended to increase genetic diversity. To do this, the sperm content of several capillaries is diluted with tris buffer solution in a proportion of 12 to 1. Every operation must be carried out under ultra-clean conditions because a single contaminated portion 
would adulterate the entire batch of semen and endanger all the queens of an insemination series. Because of the high effort involved, this technique should only be applied to large-scale breeding programs. A pipette is used to mix the suspension thoroughly and fill it into a special centrifuging tube. Any rotary centrifuge is suitable for centrifugation. After a 10 to 15 minute run at 1000 G, the sperm are deposited at the lower end of the tube. The clear supernatant is removed and the plastic tube is cut off on a level with the surface of the sperm. The insemination syringe is then filled with the homogenized semen. A queen, who was treated with CO2 on the previous day, is placed headfirst into the retaining tube. Then, the queen holder is fixed to the block on the instrument. A whiff of CO2 helps to immobilize the queen. To control the dose of gas, it flows through a washing flask. The ventral hook, left, engages behind the ventral plate of the last segment. The dorsal, or sting hook, in this case a perforated hook, exposes the sting chamber. The sting lancets and epidermal folds are now visible. The vaginal orifice is recognizable as a wrinkled bulge in the middle. The syringe is adjusted in the direction of the vaginal bulge and the droplet of diluent removed. The vaginal orifice is only exposed in techniques which lift up the sting apparatus. The syringe can therefore be inserted without the use of a vaginal probe and the semen is injected directly. This concludes the insemination procedure. The syringe and the hooks are removed. The still narcotized queen is released from the holder. Clipping one wing prevents her swarming later on, but it is nonetheless essential to cover the entrance of the mating cage with an excluder as well. Bee candy seals the cage and the queen is returned to her hive. The more favorable the brooding and temperature conditions are for the queen, the sooner she will begin to lay eggs.